Hi guys, this is Paula, and I am back, and I have finished the last little bunny book. So, we're moving on, and I discovered something whenever I was um, working on the little bunny book, and I thought I'd just share this idea with you guys I came up with. Now, I don't know if I'm the one that came up with it. I've never, ever seen it. But it's not a big deal. That doesn't matter to me. But I just want you to know I can't reference anybody because I don't know of anybody. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is start with this one. Now, when I'm out and about shopping or whatever, if I find a, a bag that's too big, but I think somehow I can use that in my... Um, my journals. Excuse me, I was taking a drink. I would. So, first of all, I want to show you, Tim Holtz has some cool fabrics. They're just colors that look real faded, and yeah, like there's several different ones, and you can get them at Joann's, and they're in the rolls that, you know, are for quilting. But look at this one's kind of cool. Well, let me find it. Looks all grungy and dirty. Here's this black one I like, too. But anyway, so I just rolled that out and decided that could be the majority of the fabric we use for this. Now, I also want to show you, and I'll show you later on, on this other thing. Okay, so I just grabbed, this is what I was talking about, this green bag. Now, it has a little piece of tape right here, and, you know, it's not perfect, but this is junk journals that we're doing. And um, so, I just grabbed a couple pieces of papers out of my scraps that's on the table. I have a big scrap bin, which is drawer after drawer after drawer of different colors. And then I have a little Ziploc that I keep on my desk. So, I can just grab something if I need to. Not always are the colors there that I need, but we can always hope, can't we? Okay, so... My idea is to make a two or three or maybe even a four pocket bag. Now, I know we get these bags and we put them in and we fold them like this and we flip them out and then we fold them like this and we tip, use, do like a tipping or whatever. And some of the bags we have are this wide. So I'm going to show you how to use old bags that you've got a goodie in or glassine bags anything that is this size or bigger okay now you use your sewing machine so you'll need your sewing machine for this and um, so the first thing I'm going to do is this is kind of wrinkled but that's all right you don't want to worry about any of that First thing I'm going to do is we're going to make this and then I'll use it in a journal. I don't have any plans for any of these, but I'm going to fold this in half. It was already folded because I had it in my purse. So it's folded in half. Now, if you want to ink your bags, you can. This one is dark enough that I'm not going to deal with it. Um, so I'm folding it in half, which automatically... If I stitch down these sides, I'm going to have one, two, three pockets. Now, I'm going to stitch real quick on this one to show you what I mean. Because if it's not, I'm not going to put the camera over here because I'm just stitching and then I'll show you how I end up stitching. Now, I'm, I think I'm going to use a zigzag um, and hope that that is what I want. I was going to just use a straight stitch, but because that's what I did on my previous one. But I'm going to tell you that when you stitch, I want you to stitch all the way up past this little flap all the way to the end. And you can either go off the end or you can turn and come back down. So you're going to have like a double stitch. That's what I'm about to do. So... I think I'll do a zigzag. I'm using a contrasting 
um, thread, which is like a chocolate brown. It's not super contrasting, but it's better than using some colors. And it's what's been in my machine all day. This doesn't take very long. All we did was simply fold up our bag one time. Now, there'll be other ones that we'll do different. I'm trying to get it to a point that I can turn a corner here. Oop, I need one more stitch, it looks like. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna go over about a less than a half an inch before I do my next stitch. Okay. I don't really me measure any of this. I just kind of um, look at it <laughs> and just eyeball it. I don't know what I'm going to put in the pockets, but I thought we could collage or do clusters on the front of these bags together. We'll do it one at a time. Or we can make the bags and... Um, decide what we want to do together. Okay, now I'm going to show you the first one while I, and then I'll stitch the second one. This is zigzag. Can you see that? I, I think we have too much light. I'm going to close this one light down. Hopefully that's okay. All right, I'm knocking everything over because I dropped my control. Okay, so see, you can see the zigzag there. Now, I will tie my zigzag off. My machine doesn't back stitch, or I haven't figured out how to do it. So, I'm going to do this side real fast, since you've seen that first side. And um, so, you do both sides, and depending on what you're going to do, I mean, you may de decide to do something even different. So I'm going to start on the bottom because that's, I can kind of keep it even that way, maybe. Okay. Here we go. Now, if you put anything super heavy in this, I would say not to put too tight of a pocket. And I don't know how that would happen or how that would be, but... Um, I just think, you know, you don't want it super tight. I just noticed a little tear in my old bag here. I'm going to see if this will take care of it. I'm going to stitch over it with zigzag, but I got off a little bit here. But, you know, I'm not concerned about that because it's still, I just... I'm not going for the real neat look. All right, almost done here. Okay, now, I'm trying to remember how I figured out I was doing, um, a, um, what is it called? Of course, I can't remember. I was doing like a little, um, accordion, um, book in the bunny book. And I thought, where, now, where am I going to tuck that? Because, you know, I don't have an accordion, uh, pocket or anything like that. So I decided I would make something that would hold my accordion pocket. And so that's how I ended up. I used an old glassine bag I had. And I just thought, well, I'll try it with this. And it worked great. So, um, and actually it wasn't old after all. It was one that Christy from Ooh La Crafts, Ooh La La Crafts, um, had sent some ribbon or trims in to me. And so I've got a couple more of those and I'm gonna, if I have time, I'll do one of those too. But, 
So there you go. I'm going to get something to show you how this works. I'm just going to take some cards, different cards that I've got stuffed in my little basket over here. Okay, none of these mean anything. I don't know what they are. This is one, believe it or not. So if you put this on your page and you glue it down here on the left and here on the right and across the bottom, that's going to give you even another pocket here in the back. So we've glued it down. There's the back pocket. Here is the second pocket. Okay. And here is the third pocket. Of course, I don't know. You might want to end up trimming off the uh, edged part there, but it doesn't bother me. Okay, and then if you wanted to, now we're just going to pretend this is, let me see, I think I've actually got some. We're going to pretend this is just a, a big piece of paper. You could put another pocket across the front and have a fourth space. Okay, so I'm going to pull these out because I wasn't planning on using those necessarily. So I thought what we would do, I really love the check, but I thought what we would do is, I was looking to see if the torn place covered up and it looks like it did. It was just a tiny little thing anyway. So I kind of liked having some of this on here but i think i want to i want to do it like a cluster so i'm going to get out my tear tool because i love my tear tool tracy fox got me using my tear tool again and she, when she was using hers and i'm just kind of liking it it's just lots easier and faster to tear your your paper and um so if you don't have one, I think Creative Memories has them. And if I remember right, I think I heard Tracy say that you can get a type of tear tool on um, Amazon. So that's something for you guys to consider. All right, so I'm going to take this and hope that it's big enough. I think it's big enough to do a cluster of some sort. Uh, I'm thinking maybe this direction and then we'll tear this other paper here. It's got a script on it. And this just so happens to be some old uh, Creative Memories paper that from a long time ago when I sewed Creative Memories and that's been forever ago. And um, I can't even hardly remember that I did it. Yes, I can, I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm going to come over because I don't want this piece to be super big, but I want it to cross over the other. Okay, there we go. Now I'm not inking. I may go back and ink over some of it, but I'm not inking. And I think I want to tear a little bit more off of this star shape. I don't want it quite that pointy. I want it to stay on the, on the bag. Yeah, maybe we'll do like that. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and then we're going to take this script and see if we can decipher whether or not it's, yeah, this is the upright. And so we have that like that. Now, I, I want to use some of this Tim Holtz rusty color because uh, it you can kind of see some in the, um, right there in the, um, star paper. I really wanted a piece here that has, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear twice on this. And I really almost cut that without thinking. Okay, so I like to rough up the edges, but I wanted this kind of black, little black oily spot to be there. Now I'm also gonna do the um, two sides if I can get it to tear. Some fabric I can. When you cut small strips like this, it's when you're not super strong, it's, yeah, see, I'm going to have trouble with it. I have a feeling. Let's see. 
it's not going anywhere. So I won't even do that. I'll just tear it right here. And, um, and the thing is, is you don't know from one time to the next if it's going to let you do that. It just depends on the fabric. Like right now, this one doesn't want to tear where I need it to. So I'm getting a different piece. Fooey on that one. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to trim off some of that. I really want this to be... I'm going to try again. Keep your fingers crossed for me. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what was up with the other one. But I, I guess I'm going to leave the top or just start uh, pulling out thread out of the top and it will snag it up a little bit. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because we don't have a lot of time. Okay, so I just want it to be kind of all different directions. You know, I want it to look like it's supposed to be clustered. Now, I want to use some of this uh, burlap also, and I'm just going to cut it in half because I want to use it on the other one I have as well. And I do have more. I just have to dig it out. I don't remember what I did with it at this moment, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay. See, only thing about burlap is you start off, and before you know it, you've got a piece this big, and then you got a piece that big. Do you guys know what I'm saying? It can be very frustrating. So I want the burlap to kind of stick out from the Tim Holtz fabric. Mm -hmm. Let's do like this. We don't have to have certain points be certain ways. I just want to pile stuff on top of it. Now I'm going to get some sari silk. I don't know what's going to end up being the image on this, but I just thought sorry, uh, not sorry silk, but um, cheesecloth. I thought we'd put some cheesecloth on here in some direction. And then I'm going to throw some, if I can find some lace, I'm going to throw some lace on here too. Because why not? You know? Why not? So, it was Monday, so I'm sure a lot of you had to go back to work today. That's a bummer. You'll be like me one day and get to retire. And I say that in the nicest way, but really... Uh, I can take it or leave it. I'd rather be working. Except for my channel. I love doing my channel. Okay. Here we go. Now, I'm not sure yet where we're going to put this because I'm still trying to decide what to put on there. So, I'm thinking it kind of looks like a country type look. It has that country type look. And so, I'm thinking about putting an old photo on there. I have, you know, of course, Tim Tim Holtz has great old photos, and I got some of his new, his some of his new ideology came out um, this last few weeks, and uh, you need to go check it out. And I'll tell you some of them that crack me up. Some of these pitch, old pictures just crack me up. Um, like you know, you get different ones, but like, look at this one. How fun is that? So I'm thinking we might even use this one. We'll just bring this over here and put the picture on top of the, the cheesecloth. But yeah, these old pictures are funny. I'm trying to see if I got, look at this one. These are some not from, this isn't from the, um, Look at all those pleats and ruffles in those dresses. Just kill me right now if I had to wear that. Um, but, like, look at this little guy. Oh, there's some of them so funny. Um, this one looks about the same time as this, so I may add this one in here somehow, too. But I want to add um, some other things, you know, like just some embellishments of some sort. Um, 
Now, if we decide we want to stitch anything on these, we have to do it separate and then glue it on to, to um, yeah, see, I don't like that. I would rather have, I think I'd rather have one picture and, and go from there. Let's see what else I've got over here in my little, my little package. I just got this stuff in the mail today and, um, I'm really liking some of it. I'm looking for something green that would go behind um, that color. We could either do green or we could do, I don't know if you guys can hear Sadie, but I think she's driving my husband crazy. Okay. Maybe just one of these old. Do you hear the no? <laughs> I heard the no. And was pretty firm. You know what she does? She used to bring you her toy. And she would um, take her toy and give it to you. And then she would... I'm going to sew these, I think, guys. I'm going to try to keep it in the same position it's in. Not onto the package. Separate. So we may lose everything we've laid out. Okay, I'm going to sew around it. Anyway, so she'll take her toy now and lay it up on the couch right next to where my husband is. Now, I'm not going to sew like around the whole thing. I'm just going to sew through it, kind of through it like, you know, it was meant to be. Just in a couple places, maybe. We may get it over there and it may not even be the same shape. Um, anyway, so she's been bugging him big time. Uh, she'll lay it up there and, and then wait on him and she tries to grab it before he grabs it. And, um, it's just fun to watch her cause she just thinks she's, she's a little smarty pants. Okay. I'm trying to rearrange my cluster and get it back like it was. Okay. Let's bring that one out. Okay. There we go. Used to, she'd just hold it in her mouth and take it up to you. But now she's been doing this whole, um, you know, where she just lays it up beside you and then tries to beat you at it, at grabbing it. Now, I'm just, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just sewing through the middle of this um, and, and not even trying to be straight. I mostly was trying to keep it in place. I may decide I don't like that, this after I'm done. And that's okay too. This is how you learn, is just by trying. You know, you don't know if you're going to like it or not until after the fact. Because a lot of it will be covered up whenever you... Um, they cut the strings off here. I don't like those. So we just built this cluster and we know it's holding itself down with the zigzag now. And we've got the stitches on the side, which give it a little bit of a design too. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna use this picture or one of the others here. There's some funny ones, and I didn't dig any out, but this is, uh, there's some new ones. These, I think, are still some of the old ones. I don't know. She cracks me up. Okay. Let me get some more. I'll share my little pictures, viewing the little pictures of of these. These are some of the old ones, but I've got the new set now too. So I really want us to have a smaller one. In his new set, he made, I believe he made smaller ones. Well, maybe that's the small ones right there. No, well, this is his new set that I have here, but I would like a small picture. So let me grab a small, small one. I also like his little people. 
you know, that he has. Oh, this is good because see, we could make this like a photo cluster. And, um, or maybe we can cluster it together with something else. Now, I know this is taking forever. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make it faster. And I'm just grabbing little cards. I don't even know what they say. I'm trying to find one that's at least in that color scheme or black or something that will work. Um, I like to just take Tim Holtz stuff and just do whatever with it. Okay, so I don't know if I like that or not, you guys. Let's see what this chick looks like. Now this is just a, it's just a card. But I like some of these. I really like his cards and his in, his embellishments. See, I like that better. What do you think? I think it needs ink to be separated from all this other stuff. I know I didn't ink everything, but um, I think on this situation, I like the little lady. But I got to figure out where I want to put her. Kind of want her to, I want stuff to kind of pop out around her. Um, with her, the way she's looking, she really needs to be at this direction. So, let me see what else we've got. Let's see what else we got. You know, you got to dig and find. We could put uh, some kind of floral. I know Tim Holtz has florals, don't you? He's had florals forever. Let's do like this. Or we've got some of these others. I don't like those. And here's another one that's got more red than pink. So we could put the little title behind it, see? So let's make that work. And, you know, if you wanted to put something very small on there, like a little label, or you could. But I think what I'm going to do is do, like, a button or a flower or something like that. So, I'm going to glue this down real quick with just a little bit of glue. Not the whole cluster, but just the part right here of her and her little florals going on. Trying to keep them in the same spot that I had them in. Man, the second I got the email from uh, scrapbook.com that Tim Holtz's new stuff was coming out, I was like, I went, oh, got on there right away. Okay. So let's do like this. Okay. Now this is just on the cluster itself. So now we need something. And I'm thinking um, some kind of, let me see what little flowers I have out over here. I've got a few little things of flowers in my collage basket, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. <laughs> Let's see what scraps of lace I might have, if any, that will work with this, this color scheme. I don't have anything green in here or mauve. So I just have plain lace. Let me grab some and see what it will look like. Might be too white. That one's way too white. I'm sorry, guys. I'm pulling back out of the way so you don't get as confused as I am. So anyway, I guess we will not be using 
any of this lace because it doesn't work. None of it will work. It's not the right color. Now we can use some of this. Okay. So I just like to take a little strip of or two of lace and, you know, stretch it across and make it make it look it, like it was on purpose. So I am going to take, I don't know how long this lace is, so I don't want to go too far. Yeah, I can add a little bit more right here. And by the time you get done clustering, before you know it, you've just got all these layers and you don't know what it's going to look like till you're done. Now, what I'm going to do next is move this stuff so you can see. When you have a lace that's really been folded, sometimes it's hard to to get it to only these little these came from Walmart but they're just you know they weren't expensive but they just had the right look for this sort of thing I'm gonna have to go back into Walmart and get me some I should have bought just this kind I bought others and it ended up being too lacy looking and I didn't like them so I'm gonna put this can you guess where Yes, you're right. I'm either going to put it in one or two places. My mat, my glass mat is under this. Hmm. I'll put it right there. Keep it all in the center as much as I can. Now, we are going to um, take our bag and take our piece, our cluster, and I I am going to add a little bit of ink right around the outer edges. Um, I didn't ink mostly because I didn't want to slow us way down. I feel like we never get anything accomplished. I'll watch someone else's video and they've done what seems like a ton of stuff. And here we are, we're getting one or two things done. So I'm trying to improve on that. But at the same time, I don't want it to look like crap just because, you know, I got in a super big hurry. And my ink doesn't want to come out super fast. So, all right, so we're going to glue this down. And, you know, if it was not a bag you could stitch it down do you know what I mean you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to glue it down and I'm trying to avoid being too close to the outside so we don't have to deal with anything leaking onto our um, our back ah come on it's real bulky uh, awkward I guess is the word I'm looking for Okay, here we go. I love the way this is turning out, you guys. This is a fun thing to do. I've been wanting to find something new to do. And, um, because I just get, you know, you get tired of making the same things. And so when you get something new to, to make, it's exciting. This is all kind of folded up and I would prefer it to be more laid down so I'm just gonna cut some off of there so there we go now I am going to put stuff in the pockets so let's see what we can come up with now you can do tags you can do I mean it could go on and on like here is a big tag now I like the way that looks it's going to be real close, but I think it will fit fine because you're not going to glue past this first zigzag line. So we're going to do that one up 
And then let's see what else we've got in here to do. Do, 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 do. Let's see. I'm looking. I want something with green. This has green, but I wished he wouldn't have used shiny stuff. Some of them are kind of shiny. And another thing I like is he's, he put postcards. Old postcards. Like, look at this old beach postcard. I'm sorry the light is glaring. I've been trying to improve on my lighting, and so I've been trying different things. So, obviously, this one is... I think I'm going to put the beach. That's got a blue sky. This has got green in it. Still a little too much yellow, though. So, let's just go with the beach. Well, here's another one. I don't know. That's pretty, too, isn't it? Yeah, let's try that one first. Um, and I mean, you just put whatever you want. See, you it's peeking out of there real good. I don't like that one. It's getting put back in the box. Let me see what else I can come up with. I'm digging. Let's see what this is. Just some kind of advertisement. Oh, it's just a copy of a book with language lessons by Harper and Brothers. So I guess this was a, a let's see what grades it says. Introductory for intermediate. Okay, so we're just going to stick that right in there because it's the right color. Who cares what it says? And now we need to ink this giant tag up. And that is a big tag. It is four inches across. I'm almost positive. Yep. I'm getting pretty good at guessing three and four and two. And um, Now we want to take this because it is a tag. We don't want to just slap it on there and stick it in there plain. We got to decorate it, right? Okay. You gotta do the back also. Sorry. This is my fast way of inking. I don't ink up on the paper all the time. I just ink the edges just to cover up any um, white color or something that might be on there. Now, you know, you can put you could put a postcard on there. You could do all kinds of stuff. Let's see what we got. Let me get over here and look. Um. We have a, come on, fingers work right. Let's see what this is, a boarding pass. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, let me get down in here. Got some, I'm not sure what those are. Okay, so we have this boarding pass, which we could put at an angle. And, hmm, nope, let's get something else that goes with trip information. Let's see. I'm looking. I think I'm just going to do like, you know, like make it travel like. And that's okay because... Unless you're doing a themed book, this is fine. Um, let me see what else I've got. Okay. I'm digging through the box. Oh, I like this. Maybe we won't do just a travel theme. I like this old letter. And I saw another old letter in my box. I have all this stuff organized, so, you know, anything smaller than this is in the same box. And I've got a section in here that I can just really go through it. Um, here is an airmail. I like these old fake 
letters. Maybe she's writing for to her military. Well, no, it doesn't really talk like it's military. Maybe it is. I'm sorry, my head just went in there, didn't it? And it looks, I have it all pinned up because it won't stay off out of my face. Don't laugh at me, guys. Just realize that I'm in the middle of crafting and, and, and it's uh, difficult. Okay, I'm going to put these numbers there. I love just collaging and adding numbers and letters and stuff like that. I'm still looking. Don't want to use that letter. Let's see if we have any stamps. We have some fake stamps over here. Let's use those. Here we go. It's in the right color scheme and everything. All right, so I think we should have the letter further down and the stamps further up. Okay. How's that? Now, all of this has to be inked. I'm not adding, like, muslin or anything to this one because it's going to be tucked in a pocket. And I don't want our pockets to be... pooched out too much. I can get hold of this little thing. These are little um, bingo uh, numbers. But it looks like I cut it off of something because it has a white edge. What would we do without some of Tim Holtz or Seven Gypsies little papers and I think it's it just is what makes the the collages or the clusters oh looks like this was on the back of a project life card doesn't it <laughs> see I didn't even know that getting double use out of it here okay Put it up here. My glue is driving me crazy. It won't, every time I set it down, it falls over. It's because this table, I have several things underneath <laughs> and it's not level. I didn't want my glass, uh, my glass um, plate on the table to uh, my mat. I didn't want it to blind you guys. So I put this ugly, worn out. I'd love to come up with something like just pull this glass one out whenever I'm doing mixed media. The problem is, um, let me see how I want that. The problem is, is it's, I'd have to find another place to put it. You know how that is. You just go like move this to get this. And before you know it, you don't have anywhere to put any of it and I think that's why my room is stays constantly full well it would help if I'd stay out of the store too <laughs> you know that wouldn't hurt anything okay now I'm going to grab a piece of oh here's some of this Tim Holtz um, fabric that I tore off of are off the side of one of those pieces of cl a cluster. And what I'm going to do is just put in a little piece of this fabric that was left over. And this is another one of those slap and go kind of projects. I, I'm trying to teach myself to, um, and, and in the meantime, help teach you guys that, you know, not everything has to take all day. And it can still look decent, you know? Let me get my stapler. You've got this giant tag and this little topper. <laughs> but I think it looks all right. Man, I just noticed my phone is so dirty. Okay. Charlie played with it last night when we were at uh, dinner. So here you go. This is what it would look like in a book. And do you know 
we've been on here 45 minutes to do this. Think of the time it takes to, it really is time consuming and I felt like we were going pretty fast. I didn't even eat properly. But anyway, so um, I guess I'm gonna show you guys real quick because we've got 15 minutes. But this is, this is the very back. This is the inside where you folded it over and this is this pocket. Now, I am going to get this a big bag. I had a big bag and I kind of practiced a little bit, but I want to show you guys in case you decide you want to do when I'm putting these cards back in the box. Okay. So what I did with this big bag, and you can see this is like a, um, I want to say 10 by, nope, 11, 11 and a half by eight and a half sack. And this is the front here where it opens up. So I decided just to fold it. Wait a minute. Nope. How did I do that? Isn't that funny? You just have to stop and think. I, I took the bottom and was going to fold it up. And then I had the back here. And I thought, no, I'll just fold it down. So then I folded it down. And then I folded it around. And then I decided I can stitch down the sides here, but this won't show. And when we put a tag in for the back portion, we'll just make one this wide right here so it slides in. And um, so then you have one, two, three pockets. And I'm gonna run this real fast through the machine because I want you to see what this is gonna look like if we run over a minute or two, so what? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stitch this. Oh, but first I need to we don't want this pocket not to be inked. So I just came up with this this afternoon. I'm like I I've been kind of thinking what can I do with this sack besides this or besides that and I am going to do this in a zigzag as well if I can get it under here I may just put one stitch for now we'll see hope my needle can get through here without any problems it is the needle of the champions So you can't put big giant wide things in this probably two and a half to three inches would be as far as I would go with with any kind of uh, I'll show you what this looks like in just a second I'm gonna go ahead and go around it and so we can get a good look at it I'm sure I'm not doing that zigzag <laughs> like I've I took it in the opposite way of how you're supposed to start it. So it's not going to be beautiful zigzag. It's going to be junky zigzag. This is where it's like triple fold going on here that you can hear. I'm almost done with this one side. So I'm really not attempting to do a beautiful fold or a beautiful stitch as much as I am to get the fold. So I'm going to do this side over here real fast. We're almost out of thread so that will make us have to stop with this portion. Okay, I'm going to put it right here and start from here. So basically, because I'm stitching and showing it to you, you can see what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm just sewing that part we folded around. I'm just doing it. Now, yes, this cannot be a little tiny book. Now, if you use smaller envelopes, not envelopes, bags, if you use smaller bags, you know, maybe the kind we would put in a bigger journal that's 
just its regular size, you could um, you could definitely um, fold them and put them into smaller books. So I think it's doable either way you look at it. I have really enjoyed just taking a bag, for instance, or an envelope or, or a blank card or whatever it might be. I've really enjoyed uh, just taking something and making it something different. Uh, it's different and it's, it's just fun. And when you don't have to be perfect about it, it's even more fun. Because then you've got, you know, now I didn't even try to make sure these were even with each other. <laughs> but you can see there that they turned out pretty much okay. Now I am going to lift this up right here and put slap some ink on there so that whenever you um, do this part, you can see the separation of the pockets. Because it'd be kind of a bummer not to be able to. Because it would just look like a piece of bag put on there, right? Okay. And, of course, your paper will be a lighter color, you know, when you're done. So, I'm just inking around this. And while I'm doing that, I'm thinking, what will be our next step? Because we have um, both pockets here. Like, we have, like that one's laying in a little bit. But if you look... This side and this side's bigger than this side and this side. So, I did make a design there, you know. And if I wanted to, I could have stitched across the bottom to keep that from gapping open. But I just think it's a waste of time. Nobody's going to care about that. And if you want to hide something up there, you can. <laughs> okay, so there we go. This is how our pocket will look. Now, this one, did I lay out stuff to do this one? I don't think I did. Let me think. I can come up with something. I'm going to use muslin. I think I'm going to use some muslin um, for the bottom for sure. Let's see how wide we want this. See if I can tear this without hurting myself. <laughs> without injuring myself. Okay. Let's see. Of course, the string. Sometimes when you pull the string, it just doesn't want to come out. Especially if you're pulling more than one. But sometimes they kind of get gathered up together. Come off of there, only when you're in a hurry. Okay, that's good enough. Now, what we can do is kind of measure where we want it. It's a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be, but for time's sake, I'm not gonna cut it shorter. Let's see what this other end, it might be a little smaller. It is, it's a little straighter too, it looks like. So we're gonna tear across this part. Sadie has not been in, in uh, she's been in trouble all night. She's not being a good girl. She's being naughty. And, and Rick is not gonna put up with it. Okay, so here we go. So we can put this right here. And if we wanted, we could do it here as well. Um, I don't know yet if I want to do that um, or not. And we can use this muslin, which look, I mean this burlap, which looks really good with, with, you know, this color scheme. Now, also, if we wanted to add some of this Tim Holtz, let me grab this one color out. It almost looks, I don't know what color to call it. <laughs> I don't know if it's yellow or if it's white and, um, see it's, 
Oh no, that doesn't go. That doesn't look good together. So strike that. Um, let me think. We could add paper. We could add anything we want. Maybe we want to brighten it up a little bit and do something different. You know, maybe some blue. Let me see in my pack in my scraps over here what I can come up with. Now, some of these scraps I have do happen to be new. Um, so I'm not really seeing one that will go. Yeah, unless I go with a, um, here's one. Here's one that might work. Let me get my fingers on it. If I can get my hands on it. And then when you pull one out, you've pulled out. This is how I do scraps. I mean, I keep regular scraps too. But I will pull out um, scraps and use them all different ways. Okay. So I'm going to tear this right here. We'll see. But I'm planning on it. I'll put it that way. Worked on that one. I think it's the different kinds of fabrics make a difference. Okay, now let's see. I don't want the, I just want this to be on the inside. It really needs to be creamier. And um, it might not go really well with this muslin. We'll just have to see. We're not going to glue it down. I'm just going to kind of give you an example. Because we're running out of time. We're running to the finish line. Okay. Now, I'm going to tear right here. The last one tore, so, yep, there we go. And right here. That one was really small. I think this is some of the Paris fabric that I have. It doesn't really matter because you can't read it anyway, right? Okay, it's kind of like the stamps. You can't read what they say most of the time. But the thing about this fabric I've noticed is that it frays funny. It looks funny when it frays. Like it will have randomly have a long one sticking out. This looks odd. Okay. I'm not cleaning this up tonight either. I'm just saying. Okay, so I do like it, but I think that it's too white to be on there by itself. So, anyway, I'm just giving you some examples. Um, I guess we need to close up shop for now, and maybe we'll come back and do this again tomorrow, because I have other ones planned. And so, I'm just going to leave all this out, and tomorrow, before I do anything else, we will work on these. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting all choked up. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something today or this evening. And um, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed our one that we made. <coughs> Sorry please give me a thumbs up. And uh, again, remember, you can change these out. You could have them all one theme. Just depends on what you want to do. But we chased this down the street the other day. <laughs> this little green bag. My husband said, I can buy you some bags. <laughs> and I said, no, I want that bag. <laughs> So, he probably thought I was a little crazy, but we've all figured that out, haven't we? <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you next time. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And welcome to all the new subbies. Bye, guys.